When you're on the road and miles away from your maintenance office, the last thing you want is a truck that breaks down and leaves you stranded. That's why a pre-start inspection is so important. Before you get started, make sure the wheels of the truck are chalked or blocked. Don't rely on the parking brakes alone. Blocking the wheels prevents accidental or unintended movement that can crush and injure workers. To properly chalk a freestanding truck, place chalks between the left and right rear axle wheels. Do this anytime you're loading, unloading, hitching, unhitching, or performing maintenance or service. When you get ready to start your day, simply walk around your truck and do a visual inspection. Start by checking the condition of the tires. Always check the pressure when the tires are cold or have been used for a very short time. One way to check the tire pressure is by bump checking the tire with a thumper. A properly inflated tire produces a sharp sound when hit and the thumper will bounce back sharply. If a tire is significantly underinflated, the sound will be more of a dull thunk and the thumper will not bounce back so well. Of course, bump checking is not a substitute for using the tire gauge to check for proper inflation. Check the operator's manual or the outside of the tire to find the proper tire pressure and use the tire gauge to confirm your tires are at the manufacturer's recommended level. Besides tire air pressure, the tire tread depth is another important part of tire maintenance. Oklahoma state law requires that all tires on a dump truck must have a minimum of two thirty seconds of an inch of depth. Additionally, the front steering axle of a truck tractor requires tires to have a minimum tread depth of four thirty seconds of an inch. Check with your maintenance department and borrow the tire gauge to make sure the tires are in accordance with the law. Insufficient tread on a tire can cause a blowout and possibly hydroplane the truck. Finally, check that there are no bulges, bumps, or knots shown in the tread or sidewall area and that the wheels aren't cracked and are securely fastened to the hub of the vehicle. Whatever the type of tire wear, report it immediately to your supervisor. Your driving style will also prolong the life of your tire. For example, don't spin the wheels when you start driving or skid when you step on the brakes. Also, try to avoid running over curbs when you're turning corners or parking the truck and avoid riding the edge of the pavement. Road and weather conditions can change quickly, so adjust your driving style and speed and always keep a safe distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Keeping your distance and anticipating having to stop at all times is a perfect example of defensive driving. After you finish the walk around and with the engine cooled off, open the hood and check the oil and coolant levels. If the level is low, fill the reservoir with the proper fluid. Wipe off all the grease fittings and lubricate them according to the operator's manual. Double check the tightness of the drive belts and check the hydraulic system for possible leaking lines and connections, bent or kinked lines, and lines rubbing against other parts of the engine. Also, make sure that the connections and insulation of electrical wires are in proper and safe condition. Next, look at the battery. The factory installed battery is maintenance free and under normal conditions the electrolyte should remain at the proper level. To check the level, look at the indicator light on top of the battery. Green means normal level. Black means the battery is insufficiently charged and transparent indicates not enough electrolyte and the battery needs to be replaced. It could happen that you need to jump start another truck or other piece of equipment when you're on the job. Here are some guidelines to do it correctly and safely. Make sure the vehicles are not touching and that the ignition on both vehicles is off. While wearing the proper PPE, connect the red jumper cable to the positive plus post of the dead battery. Then connect the other end of the red jumper cable 
to the positive or plus post of the live battery. Next, connect one end of the black jumper cable to the negative post of the live battery and the other end of the black cable to an unpainted metallic part of the vehicle with the dead battery. When the cables are connected, start the good battery's vehicle and then start the dead battery's vehicle. After the vehicle with the discharged battery has started and is running again, disconnect the jumper cables in the reverse sequence from the hookup. When you're finished checking the battery, take a closer look at the air cleaner. Remove the air filter cover and clean the filter if necessary. Next, climb in the cab using the three-point rule of contact. Either one hand and two feet, or two hands and one foot, need to be in contact with the truck at all times. Check the brakes and make sure that the air tanks have been drained and engage the foot pedals and make sure they work right. Collect any trash that's left in the truck, especially on the floorboard. Trash can roll behind the pedals, get stuck, and jeopardize your safety and the safety of others on the road. Make sure you have a clean windshield and that the windshield wiper reservoir is filled up. Wiper fluid may seem like just a cleaning product, but in reality, it's a safety device allowing you to drive in rain, snow, and many other inclement conditions. Also, check the condition of the windshield wiper blades and have them replaced if necessary. Check your mirrors and adjust them if necessary. Check all the levers, gauges, and controls on the dashboard and make sure everything looks correct. It's important to be seen so check the head and tail lights, as well as the turn signals and safety lights. And when you put the truck in reverse, make sure the backup warning signal is audible. Finally, check your seat belt, horn, two-way radio, and first aid kit. And make sure the fire extinguisher isn't expired. Back outside, Make sure the hoist of the dump bed is working correctly and check the dump bed itself. A pre-start inspection may seem tedious, but when you realize the average price tag of an ODOT maintenance truck is around $120,000, you can see why preventive maintenance and a pre-start inspection are so important. <laughs>